Hosea chapter number 13. Sakla tayo ng Hosea chapter 13. And the Bible says, When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. So through the Lord's severe chastening, the people will recognize Jehovah, the Lord, to be their God and their King. But it has to come through severe punishment and chastening. So ang Diyos ay naninigurado sa kanyang mga anak, kapag ang kanyang mga anak ay hindi gumagawa ng tama, ang Diyos ay namamalo at gumagawa ng disiplina para sa kanyang mga anak, para ituwid niya ang kanilang kabaluktutan, ang kanilang kamalian. <clears throat> Verse number two, And now they sin more and more, and have made molten images of their silver, and idols according to their own understanding, all of it the work of the crafting, craftsmen. And they say to them, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. So itong calves, itong mga uh, baka, na ginawa nila galing sa ginto ay iniukit ng kanilang kamay at kanilang sinambahan bilang Diyos, bilang Panginoon iniukit na bagay o, o uh, imahen o picture o larawan uh, hindi ho ginagamit ito sa pagsamba sa Diyos dahil ang Diyos ay Espiritu at katotohanan at ang Diyos ay kumakausap sa ating puso at ang puso natin ang linalapit natin sa Diyos na hindi nakikita ng ating mga mata pero nakikita natin sa pananampalataya sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya so uh, kaya wala tayong uh, mga imahen o uh, rebulto dito dahil yun ito ang uh, pamamaraan ng pagsamba ng mga anak ng Diyos now <clears throat> si yung si calf na ito yung sinasabing calf ito ay yung si apis na bulgad o baka na lalaki na galing sa ang pagsamba nito ay sinasamba nila so, noong panahon ng Egypt nung sila ay alipin sa Egypt natuklasan nila ang pagsamba kay Apis yun ang pangalan ng Diyos Diyosan nila uh, sa pamamag- nung, nung time na, ni Moses nung sila ay uh, alipin ng Egypt and so mala- matagal na itong ugali nakaugalian ng mga Israelites tapos, nung pumasok sila sa Kainaan, nung kapanahon ni Joshua, natatanda ninyo, namatay si Moses, sumunod si Joshua, si Joshua naman ang naging uh, leader nila. Nung pumasok sila sa Kainaan, kung ano-anong mga diyos ng mga tiga, tiga roon, yon ang inangkin at ginawang mga diyos ng mga children of Israel. Hindi sila nanatiling tapat sa Diyos, lalo na sa kapanahon ng mga hari ng Israel. And so, ngayon, nangangaral si Propeta Hosea at nagbibigay siya ng babala sa Israel sa Northern Kingdom at sinasabi niya papunta na ho, pasakop na ang Assyria sa kanila and so, mm, nandito ba yung green notebooks natin? William, give one to everyone Joseph help yeah. yan, tulong kayo Hanapin niyo yung chart natin sa green notebook natin. Second to last. Yung pangalawa sa huli. One per row para mag-share sila. Yan. Okay. Hanapin niyo yung second to last page. Second to last page. Nakikita nyo dyan yung mga hari, kings of Israel, yan yung northern kingdom. Yung kings of Judah, yan yung southern kingdom. Tapos yung NK prophets, northern kingdom prophets, southern kingdom prophets, nakalista dyan para alam natin kung sino pinag-uusapan natin. Hanapin ninyo sa gitna, si King Jeroboam II, number 14. King number 14 ng Israel. King Jeroboam II. Yan ang hari na kung saan ang ministry ni Hosea, siya ang nangaral kay Jeroboam II. Katumbas ng di Jeroboam II sa, sa Timog naman, sa Southern Kingdom, si number 10, si Josiah. Siya naman ang hari nung kapanahonan ni 
Hosea, si Jotham, Ahaz, at saka Hezekiah. Yung apat na hari ng Juda, silang mga naghahari ng kapanahunan ni Hosea. Pero sa Northern Kingdom, si Jeroboam II. Okay, so, panatilihin nyo yung chart na yan kasi babanggitin natin ito mamaya. Meron na akong gustong i-share sa inyo. Alright, so, si Hosea ay nangaral doon sa Northern Kingdom at sinabihan niya yung mga hari na sila ay sas- sasakupin ng Assyria. And uh, Assyria will be coming as a punishment from God. So huli na ang lahat. Wala na, kahit na magsisi ang Israel. By the way, nagsisi ba sila? No. Sa 20 na mga hari ng Israel, sino yung isa? Meron bang isa sa mga hari nila na nagsisi at sumampalataya at tumawag sa pangalan ng Panginoon? No. Wala. There's not one king who repented and called upon the Lord. All the kings neglected and forgot Jehovah God. And so, verse number three, verse number three. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud, as the dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of her floor, uh, as the smoke out of the chimney. So, kumbaga, ang buhay ng, ng Israel ay pansamantala lang, parang um, asok. Nandito sa isang sandali at mga ilang years lang, mawawala na sila. And so, Uh, pagdating ng Assyria anong may iiwan sa Israel? wala so even today hanggang ngayon wala ang 10 tribes ng Israel walang nakakaalam kung nasaan yung 10 tribes na yan now, nandyan yung mga 10 tribes sigurado yan kasi nandito pa yung mga Hudyo pero saan saan yung mga tribo nila hindi natin alam binura ng Diyos sa ngayon Verse number four, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. Walang katulad ko, sabi ni Jehovah God. Sabi ng Panginoon, na nung niligtas niya sila sa uh, pangaalipin ng Egypt. And so, verse number five, I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they have forgotten me. Ayan ang marka ng backsliding. Nakalimutan niya ang Diyos. And so, dahan-dahan tayo sa pananampalataya natin dahil kung sabihin mo sa isang araw, uh, mag-pray na lang ako mamaya. Huwag na lang muna ngayon. Mamaya na lang ako mag-pray. Oh, sign ho yan na backsliding na. Oh, mamaya na lang tayo magbasa ng Bible. Wag mo na ngayon. Later na lang. Sign who yon ng backsliding. Church? Nako, wag na lang mag-church muna. Saka na lang. Sign ng backsliding yon. Okay? Lahat ng mga bagay ng Diyos, kapag linalagay mo sa second place, sign who yan ng backslidingness. Okay? So, wag ganyan ang mangyari sa atin. Now, therefore, uh, verse number uh, seven. Therefore, I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard. By the way, I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps and will rend the call of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion, like the wild beast shall tear them. So, maraming mga larawan ang ginagamit ni Hosea para silang usok. Ang Diyos, parang leon, kakainin sila, parang oso, parang bear na nawalan ng mga anak na galit na galit pupunitin niya ang Israel and so he's going to use Assyria as the punishing tool and when Assyria takes over there will be nothing left of Israel and even today there is no ten tribes of Israel Israel has been reduced now to Jews to the Judah the tribe of Judah the Jews but where are the other ones? The tribes of uh, Manasseh and Dan, uh, Issachar, and uh, all the other tribes. Where are they? They're not here today. And uh, they will not be regathered until Revelation chapter 19 when Jesus comes down to establish his millennial kingdom. But only then will they be regathered. Okay? Verse number 9. 
O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. Remember this. Ang backslider ay backslider dahil sa kanyang sarili. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, ako ay backslider dahil nagalit ako kay sister so-and-so o kay brother so-and-so. No. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. That's how backsliding works. You are not backslidden because of somebody else. You are backslidden because of you. You have destroyed yourself, the Bible says. And that's the principle in Scripture. God blames Israel, and Israel has nobody to blame but himself, but herself. And so you have it there. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but look at the hope. But in me is thine help. Pero sa awa ng Diyos, kung siya ay magpakumbaba at tumalikod at manumbalik sa Panginoon, ang tulong niya ay kay Jehovah, kay God Almighty. And ganun din tayo. Kung backslider ka, paano ang muling pagbabalik sa Panginoon? How do you do that? Magsisi at manumbalik sa Diyos. That's it. Just like that. Hindi na kailangan yung isang linggo ng iyak, isang abong araw, ilang oras ng kalungkutan. No! It's a simple heart change. Willingness. Allowing God to uh, uh, fill you and have mercy upon you and be cleansed and do away with your sin. And then God becomes your helper. You see, God becomes your helper. Verse 10, I will be thy king. Amen? God will be our king. And that's what God wanted. Mula sa simula, yun ang gusto ng Diyos. Siya ang mamuno sa ating buhay. But Israel, look at what the Bible says, I will be thy king. Whereas any other that may save thee in all thy cities and thy judges whom thou settest, give, give me a king and princesses. I gave thee a king in mine anger and took him away in my wrath. So sa kasaysayan ng Israel, natatandaan ba ninyo? Sabi ng Israel sa Diyos, gusto namin na magkaroon ng hari na katulad ng ibang mga bansa. Pero sa layunin ng Diyos, ang gusto ng Diyos magkaroon sila ng hari. Pero yung hari nila, ang nais ng Diyos, yung hari nila ay magpasailalim sa Diyos upang hindi sila maging katulad ng ibang mga bansa. Na yes, meron silang mga hari, pero ginagawa nila ang gusto nilang gawin. Alright, so, uh, you see this as the history of Israel. They wanted a king, and God uh, gave them a king. Wasn't the will of God. Pero dahil matikas ang ulo nila, sabi nila, gusto namin ng hari. Sabi ng Panginoon, o oh, sige, gusto niyo ng hari, bahala kayo, bibigyan ko kayo. Ganun ang Diyos. Tandaan natin, ganun ang Diyos. Ha? Pag Kristiyano ka, ayaw mong manalangin, ayaw mong mag-Bible, ayaw mong mag-church, ayaw mong gumawa ng tama, ibibigay talaga sa'yo ng Diyos yung gusto, ng, gusto mo. Pero, yung resulta ng gusto mo, hindi pwedeng palitan yan. Ikaw, pwede mong piliin yung landas mo, pero hindi mo pwedeng piliin yung dulong wakas ng landas na yan. So, God will give that God gave them the desire of their hearts and it was not good. It did not work out for them. So, uh, uh, tingnan mo ang verse number uh, 12. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. Alam niya, nakatago raw yung kasalanan niya. Tinatago niya yung kasalanan niya. Alam mo, pag, alam mo, Kristiyano, pag may kasalanan ka, mali kang ginagawa, tapos tinatago mo yun, linuloko mo lang yung sarili mo. Kasi hindi ho, nakatago yan sa mata ng Diyos. Nakikita yan ng Diyos. Yung tao, siyempre, pwede mong lokohin, no? Pero ang Diyos, hindi mo siya pwedeng lokohin. At dadalin, dad, ilalabas din niya ang, ang kasalanan mo. Verse 13, The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of the children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Oh, this is a promise from God. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be thy plagues. O oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. So, uh, yes, nagkasala ang Israel, pero balang araw, magsisisi rin ang Israel at isasauli sila ng Diyos at 
magtatagumpay ang Diyos laban sa uh, laban sa um, kamatayan. Ang pinaka last enemy ng mga Kristiyano ay ang kamatayan. Death is the final enemy for the Christian. And yet the Bible says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? So where did that come from? Well, that came from Hosea chapter 13. That's where Paul got the uh, theology from. And so Paul must have been reading Hosea. Absolutely. Because he said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And so on and so forth. So anyway, uh, verse number... 15, though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come and the wind of the Lord shall come upon from the wilderness and his spring shall become dry. His fountain shall be dried up and he shall spoil the treasure of all the pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate and she hath rebelled against her God and they shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. Their women with child shall be ripped up. So ang Samaria ay dadaan ho sa hatol ng Diyos. Now, <clears throat> uh, saan sa kasaysayan ng Israel na namili sila ng mga hari? So, etong chart ninyo, sa so green book ninyo, yung pangalawang, last, second to last page, hindi natin nakikita yung pangalan kasi ito ay divided kingdom. Naghiwalay sila. There was a united kingdom tapos may divided kingdom. So sa united kingdom, sino yung unang hari ng united kingdom ng Israel? Si? Who? Saul. Tama, si King Saul. Tapos nung namatay si King Saul, sinong naging hari? David. David. Tapos nung namatay si David, sino naging hari? Solomon. Tapos, nung namatay si Solomon, naghati ang kaharian. Northern Kingdom, sumama kay Jeroboam. Yan yung King of Israel, the first. Jeroboam the first. Yung Southern Kingdom, namuno si Rehoboam, anak ni Solomon. So, tingnan mo ang mga kasaysayan ng hari nila. Go over to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Ito yung United Kingdom nung kapanahonan ni King Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse number 7. God did not want Israel to have a king like Saul. It was not his will. But Israel would not listen to God. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse number 7. Ang sabi ng Bible, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people. Samuel. Si Samuel yung propeta ng Diyos. Sabi ng Diyos kay Samuel, Samuel, pakinggan mo na yung gusto ng tao. In all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. God wanted to rule and reign over them. But the people didn't want God to rule and reign over them. So God said to Samuel, Samuel, go ahead, give them a king. Don't listen, listen to the people. Listen, they did not reject you, Samuel. They rejected me, said the Lord. So, anong ginawa ni Samuel? Binigyan sila ng hari. Gusto nila ng hari. Binigyan sila ng hari. Look at verse number 9. Now therefore hearken to their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Pakita mo sa kanila kung anong klaseng hari ang mamumuno sa kanila. Napakalungkot nito. Verse number 10. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that ask him of a king. Verse 11. And he said, This will be the manner of a king that shall reign over you. Ito yung hari na gusto ninyo. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. Verse 12. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and he will set them to ear his ground, to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers, And he will take your field and from your vineyard and from your olive yards, even the best of them. 
and the best of his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give uh, to his officers, to his servants. And he will take your manservants, your maidservants, and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep and he shall, shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in the day because of your king, which ye have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Oh, pinili ninyo ang inyong hari? Hindi kayo nakinig sa akin? So ngayon, sabi ng Panginoon, I will, I will not hear. Hindi po kayo pakikinggan pag nag, nanalangin kayo sa akin. Namili kayo, gusto ninyo ng hari ninyo, hindi siya ang layunin ko, pero ibibigay ko sa inyo ang gusto ninyo. Pero pag nagpray kayo sa akin, hindi ako ma, hindi ako ma, hindi ko kayo pakikinggan, sabi ng Diyos. At yan ang kasaysayan ng mga hari ng Israel. So kung titingnan mo yung kings of Israel, magmula kay Jeroboam sa kay Saul hanggang kay Jeroboam hanggang kay Hosea, pinakahuling king King number 20, pinaka-last king, ha? Wala ni isa dyan ang tumawag sa pangalan ng Panginoon. At nine dynasties. There were, you know, when God appoints a king, He wants that one king to rule forever, and there's supposed to be one dynasty. But because Israel rebelled against God, there were nine dynasties. And for that to happen, there had to be murder and killing and suicide and and destruction you see they were totally rebellious against the Lord they never repented and believed on the Lord so sa kapanahunan did my wife work by the way Assyria came and destroyed Israel natatandaan ba ninyo so ang Israel dito siya. Well, let's see. Ito yung Lake of Galilee. Ito yung Dead Sea. Ito ang Jerusalem. Tapos dito yung Samaria. Tapos yung Assyria, dito siya. Ang pangalan ng Assyria ngayon, Iraq. Ang pangunahing lungsod ng Juda, Jerusalem. Ang pangunahing lungsod ng Northern Kingdom ay Samaria. Ang pangunahing lungsod ng Iraq o ng Assyria nung kapanahonan nila, Nineveh. Nineveh. Noong 1846, Nung taong 1846 natin ha, merong isang European archaeologist na ang pangalan niya ay si Austin 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 Henry Leonard Leynard 1846 naghukay-hukay siya sa Iraq sa Nineveh alam mo na tagpuan niya yung obelisk ang tawag doon ay Black Obelisk ni Shalmaneser III Black Obelisk ni Shalmaneser III ano yung obelisk? para siyang malaking monumento at nakaukit doon sa bato ang kasaysayan na ni Shalmaneser III ng Assyrian Empire Natagpuan ni Austin Leonard, 1846 ito. Alam mo yung isa sa mga nakaukit doon ay ang buhay ni King Jehu. Na si King Jehu ay lumuhod kay King Samaneser III at nag-alay ng mga ginto at pilak para hindi niya wasakin ang si Israel, si King Jehu. Oh, sa chart ninyo, meron bang King Jehu sa Israel, King of Israel? Tingnan mo. Oh, King number 11. King number 11, si Jehu. So, nung pangkapanahonan ni Jehu, 
Kung baga, yung Assyria, nagtut, nagtatry na sila na sakupin ang Israel noon pa. Kaya lang, nagpadala ang Diyos ng isang mensahero sa Nineveh at sinabihan sila na magsisi sila. Sino yon? Si Jonah. Tama. Kaya, nung nagsisi ang Nineveh, hindi nila sinakop ang Israel ng 60 more years. Pagkatapos ng mga 60 to 100 years, bumalik uli sila. Dahil tapos na yung generation ng Nineveh na nagsisi. By the way, yung hari ng Assyria, ng Assyria na nagsisi, yung hari ng Iraq na nagsisi noon, nung kapanahunan ni Jonah, ay si Adad Nirari the third. Adad Nirari the third. That was the king of Nineveh that repented when Jonah preached. That's why God spared Israel for another 100 years. But this time, because Israel would not repent, God's going to bring back Assyria to take over in 722. 722 BC. Sinakop ng Assyria, ng Iraq, ang Israel, ang, ang Israel muna. Eto, eto lang muna. At yan ay sa kapanahunan ni King Shalmaneser the fourth, that the fifth, King Shalmaneser the fifth. By the way, si Mr. Leonard, tiga Europa siya. Yung obelisk na natagpuan niya, pag pumunta ka sa Briti- sa Britain, sa Great Britain, sa British Museum, makikita mo ito na yung lumuhod si King Jeho kay Shalmaneser III at nag-alay ng ginto sa kanya. So, 1846 na discovery yun. Pero yung Bible, matagal nang sinulat yan. Kung ano yung totoo dyan, yan pa rin ang totoo, yan pa rin ang nangyari sa Israel. At yung Iraq ang ginamit ng Diyos. So anyway, si ano naman, si Shalmaneser V naman, Sinakop niya ang Israel 722. O sino yung pinaka-last king nila? Tingnan mo yung mga last king ng Israel. 722 si Hosea, si Peka, si Pekahaya, at saka si Manahem. Yung mga pangalan niyan, may diary. Itong si Shalmaneser V at yung mga pangalan nila ay nasa kanyang diary. At yung diary niya nandiyan din sa British Museum ngayon. Ang kulang lang si number 19, wala si Pekka. Pero nandiyan si Manahem, Pekahaya, Hosea in the diary of Shalmaneser the Five. He was the Assyrian king that took over Israel. And you can go to the British Museum and you could see all of this history validated by the scriptures. Katulad ng sinabi ng Bible. Sargon II. Sargon II. Siya naman ang namuno pagkatapos ng sakop nito. Tapos, mga ilang taon, sasakupin ng Assyria. Ay, hindi. Sinakop, sinakop, yung, sinakop yung Assyria ng Babylon. Tapos, yung Babylon ang sumakop sa Judah. 566 AD, ABC Tinapos ng Diyos ang lahat Ginamit niya ang Babylon Pero tanong Hato lang ba ng Diyos ang Babylon? Yes Porka ginamit niya yung Babylon Hindi ibig sabihin absweldo na sila Sa, sa pananagutan nila Pananagutan pa rin nila ang ginawa nilang kamalian Hato lang ng Diyos ang Babylon Kailan? Babalik ang Babylon, by the way, alam ba ninyo yun? Ire-revive uli ni Antikristo ang Babylon. Saan ang Babylon ngayon? Iraq. Mm-hmm. Nandyan sa loob ng Iraq ang Babylon. Magkasama yung mga yan. Iran, Iraq, yan. 
So God will be their king. In the end, God will restore Israel. God will bring back the glory of Israel. Verse number 10. Tingnan mo ang Hosea chapter 13 verse 10. I will be thy king. Oh, no more Jeroboam the second. No more Hosea, no more Pika, no more Pekaya, no more Menahem. God will be their king. At isasuuli ng Diyos si David bilang kanilang king. So pagbalik ni Jesus Christ, mabubuhay uli si King David. At si David ang mamumuno sa mundong ito habang si Jesus Christ ang namumuno sa New Jerusalem. Uh, saan tayo? Tayo bilang Kristiyano ay kapiling ni Jesus Christ. Wala tayong lupa dito sa mundong ito. Sabi mo, Pastor, Pilipino ako. Oh, very good kung Pilipino ka. Kasi, pagligtas ka, born again ka, wala ng Pilipino-Amerikano sa langit. Lahat tayo Christian. Lahat tayo anak ng Diyos. And by the way, kung alam mo yung Bible, anong mangyayari sa mga isla? Baba. Lulubog ang lahat ng mga isla. Are you glad you're saved? <laughs> I am. <laughs> so when the Lord moves this aisle, we'll be in heaven. Amen. <laughs> so, I will be their king. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. I will be destruction for the grave. So may victory tayo sa hinaharap natin. Judgment is prophesied. Na prophesied na ito. Mang- nangyari na ito. Tapos may mangyayari pa uli sa hinaharap ng Israel. Papasok kasi ang Israel sa sakop ng Antikristo. And we make sure that through Jesus Christ, we escape the wrath of God. Let us bow and pray and ask the Lord to bless them. I'm so glad Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Aren't you? I'm so glad that He is our King. We don't have to follow any King. Our King is Jesus Christ. And one day, our king will be back to establish his kingdom on earth. And we will reign and rule beside him as kings and priests because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Habang nakayo ko ang ulo, nakapikit ang mata, Pastor, pray for me. Hindi ako sure na ako ay Christian. Hindi ako sure na save ako. Nais ko na maging born again. Pakitaas ang kamay. Let me see your hand. All right. Very good. Habang may panahon, buksan mo ang puso, tanggapin si Jesus Christ. Hindi siya namimili, hindi ka niya itatakwil, hindi ka niya huhusgaan. Tanggapin ka ng Diyos. Pag tinanggap mo siya, ka natanggap ka niya. Yan ang grasya, yan ang awa ng Diyos. Alright, Pastor, I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Kilala ko siya, tinanggap ko na siya, at kaya ko magpatutuo na ako ay ligtas sa kanyang awa, sa kanyang grasya. Pakitaas ng kamay. God bless you. That's good. To be able to say that, that's good. Amen. I hope God gives you the victory. Lahat ng mga napag-aralan natin sa Bible, merong historical evidence yan. Makikita mo yan sa mga museum, ng British Museum. Lahat ng mga ito, i-research ninyo, makikita ninyo. 1846, natagpuan ni Leonard ang mga patutuo ng mga hari ng Assyria patungko sa mga hari ng Israel. Uh, pero ang pinaka-importante, yung hari ng mga hari, si Jesus Christ. Let's remember Him. Let's serve Him. Let's make Him King of our life. This week, tayo ay kanyang mga alagad ng King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Father in Heaven. How we thank you, God, for your mercy and your love and your grace towards us. We're not perfect. We don't always remember. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we don't walk with you. Now, Father, I pray you would have mercy upon us and cleanse us and give us the victory. Help us to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Help us to make Him King and Ruler over our lives, every aspect of our lives, Lord, every section of our lives. We would surrender to the King of Kings. And Father, we're just amazed how you orchestrate the life of Israel and how you take great interest in Israel, but at the same time, you take great interest in the souls of uh, us, Lord, uh, as your children because of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray you give us victory to follow our King no matter what. Bless each and every one that's here, we pray. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.